Hi, my name is Ross Long. I am a landscape adventure and lifestyle photographer from the southwest of England. I moved to Sydney, Australia about a year and a half ago now. My main job is actually as a risk analyst. So a risk analyst is somebody who goes into a business and assesses their operations for operational risk. How I got there, I trained as a chartered accountant with Deloitte. We were like a real big multinational firm. And then once I became chartered, I then moved to Australia with Deloitte. So they shipped me out here and then it was about nine months after coming out here that I decided that I didn't want to do accounting and so I moved into this new role. I have to go to all of these different locations and then once I've done that, I'm free to do what I want to do in that location. So to the untrained eye, I look like I travel full time, but really I'm actually doing my work. I'm just really lucky. Photography for me was something that my dad did. Right? And he used to always put sparklers around our heads when we were kids, so it created like a halo effect above us and all these funny things with lights, and it was always something quite amazing. I think I always had that passion and love for photography. It just became an obsession, just becoming more, more of an adventurer than a photographer. My enjoyment is sunrise and sunset, definitely. That is the best time to shoot. You know, the tones are softer, the light can be colorful, and it just draws you in. The happiest time is when I'm shooting sunrise, sunset. That's when I'm like, relaxed. The main focus in my image isn't the sunrise or the sunset, that's just the background. And there's three elements that I focus on in my images. The background will always be the sunrise, sunset. And the middle ground, you know, that'll be the sea or the landscape that I'm shooting at, and then the foreground, and that's what makes the image interesting. And that's probably the hardest thing to find. You know where you're gonna shoot, and you could take a picture of that landscape and it would be a nice picture, but what makes that picture stand out to the rest? It's researching the place and trying to find what's personal to that place. Find that unique perspective that somebody might not have shot. And then the warm tones from the sunrise or sunset, that will just, that's just the compliment to the image. You'd think living in Sydney that you're always surrounded by perfect sunrises and sunsets, but as you can see today, for example. It's not the case, because you either have too much cloud, so you don't get one, or there's no cloud at all. There's this really good website, yr.no, and it will tell you real particular weather details, such as cloud percentages. So you've got three levels, you've got low, middle, and high, and high is what you want, that's what creates that burning, the red sky low cloud you won't get a sunrise because the cloud will block it and middle cloud's good too middle cloud's quite nice my bottom third would be my foreground interest and i would usually get as close to something as possible the second layer would be like the landscape of the sea and then the third layer the sky and i don't want that sky to be a blank canvas because our eyes are drawn to open space so if you have an open sky, your eyes will automatically go to that because it's easier to process. So that's an important thing. Don't have too much space in your image. And you know how when you're a kid, everything looks really epic? Like when you're like four years old and you walk and you see a big tree, you're like, oh my God, because it's so big. So if, it's the same thing with a camera. If you put it down low, it makes a picture look so much more dramatic and bigger. I love putting people in the landscape because it makes your images personal. You will look at them and you'll feel like you're there. You know? And the best way to create that feeling is to make your images look timeless. And you do that by creating silhouettes. And so you could relate to that. You could be that person.
shoot in the Opera House, you got to expect that you're never going to get a unique image. How many people would take a picture of the Opera House every day? If you're shooting from the ground, every composition's been done. I've seen like ballerinas and stuff posing at the Opera House. I want to do something like with adventure sports, stand up paddle waters. If you got the sunrise, the Opera House, and then somebody just kayaking through, it would just look really blissful, really peaceful, and nice. It doesn't matter how many times you go there, you know that you're not going to get the most original picture. About an hour and a half south of Sydney is the Royal National Park. We drove down in the afternoon and we walked. It's quite a long way actually, it's about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, from the main car park all the way down to the figure eight pool. Then you've got to time yourself for the waves which come crashing up, and once they've settled, then you run across, scurry across as quick as you can. And then the rocks have created these incredible pools, some of them in the figure of eight, some of them are just wide open. The beauty of going at sunset is that nobody sticks around because it's such a long walk back that nobody in their sane right mind would want to stick around till sunset. They'd rather get out of there whilst it's still light. So we had the whole place to ourselves. Once the sun disappeared, that was a walk back. So we started walking back in the dark. Then you hit the hill in the bush, which is like, I don't know, a 45 degree incline, something crazy in hot Aussie temperature. And as we start walking up, some local comes walking down and says, oh, the car park closes at 8.30. And we look at our watches and it's 8.25. So a bit of panic set it in because if they close the gates, that means we ain't, we're not getting home. So I decided to run up to the car to ensure that the gate is, doesn't get closed, which is about a 10, 15 minute run uphill. Yeah, it's just, it was pretty, quite sketchy. But yeah, we actually did make it out, which is a good thing. So I got ahead, got the car, waited at the end, for the girls to come back up and yeah, we were all away. So it all went to plan. I've been doing work with different brands and so they want those images at a certain date. It's become more stressful because it's no longer just for my own pleasure. It's now you've got a responsibility to create some really good images and something that's gonna make you stand out. Photography is one of those weird things which can be really sociable or anti-social. You notice here in Sydney there is a very close group of photographers. It would be nice to go and shoot with them but at the same time when I'm with people I get distracted so I can't take as good of a picture as I might when I'm by myself because I'm English and very polite so British politeness means that I have to make sure they're okay and I won't maybe find the best spot. I'll be like, oh no, you jump in here, you jump in here. If there's four people taking the same picture, you're gonna be the fifth person replicating the same image in the same location. Whereas if you were to go somewhere else on your own, you're the only person there to have that image. If you're shooting for yourself, it doesn't matter. But for me, like, 
I'm shooting for myself at the same time. I'm shooting to get myself one known, create something unique, and thirdly, to be able to sell and actually make some form of income on. So if you're shooting images which everyone else has, why would they buy them? Whereas if they've got something that just you have, they'll buy it, but they'll keep coming back to you because they like your style and it might be an original shot. The actual shooting is probably only about 10% of the whole process. It's really important to get the planning. There's so many elements that you need to factor in. I'm always trying to find new locations. So if you look on my Google Maps, it's just millions of pins all over the world. And I've written notes on you know, why that's a cool place or the time of year to shoot there. And the main things that you need to factor in, one, obviously the weather. Second biggest thing is tide. The tide is probably the thing I check the most with the figure eight balls. If you went there at high tide, you wouldn't be able to see them. And then mountains and landscapes, that's really, really difficult to plan because if I'm shooting mountains, I'm obviously away. So I have a limited time. So I have to deal with what I'm given. And weather is the most important because of safety. And that's hugely important because I've been caught out a couple of times at the top of mountains where a weather front's come in. And if it starts throwing it down with rain, it, the ground becomes slippy. And this is also the other thing, where's the sun gonna rise? You have to align the sun where you want it, otherwise it could look out of place. For example, in North Narrabeen Beach, there's a jetty that heads straight out into the sea, like into the horizon, a perfect straight line. And if the sun rises to the right or left of that, it, yeah, like it can still look like a cool image, but it's nowhere near as impactful as the sun directly like rising in front of that jetty. And I think I've been waiting for that shot for about four or five months. And to help me with that, there's three really good apps. Photo Pills, I probably use that every single morning and evening. That's like got this AR mode, so it shows you where the sun will actually rise relative to the landscape that you're looking at. The weather one is YR.no, and then Willy Weather, which is for the tide times, essentially. I'm going on a trip to New Zealand, and every morning I've been spending about two hours planning. The main thing I want for New Zealand is mountainous landscapes, so you, you want to find out where that is. Then you need to book all your travel, and then I want to sleep in the mountains, so you want to see, is there huts? How long does it take to walk there? How long to walk back? Because if I'm gonna do a 20 kilometer hike on one day, will I have the energy to do it the next day? All of these things just help you to be prepared because there's nothing worse if you rock up to a location, say five minutes before sunrise, and you've missed the best bit. And I don't think people realize that aspect of it. It's a, you know, they see a beautiful end product, but they don't realize that I've pumped about 60 hours of planning into just that one image and maybe spent a thousand dollars or something just to do that one image. The amount of money to spend just getting to a location, yeah, and just for a photo. But doing it full time, right now it's definitely not realistic, just because I really like the job that I have and I get to travel more than what an actual photographer would because all of my expenses are paid for. And all of these places, if I was doing this full time, I'd never be able to afford it. So I speak to a lot of photographers who say you are the luckiest person alive um, because I don't need to worry essentially about getting the perfect shot to sell. You know, I'm happy with the image. Whereas if I know I have to get a good image to sell, to make a living, be like, oh my God, I need a good image. I need to, I need to eat. <laughs> But one day, maybe, if I was gonna be a full-time photographer, I would rather be like a full-time adventurer. So it'd be a case of traveling constantly, going to remote, unique places that other people don't go to. I wouldn't wanna be your wedding photographer, your portrait photographer, or anything like that, because that's just not what I'm passionate about. It has to be the landscape. A lot of my images that have, I've sold the most of, I don't really like that much. And the images that I love to death, 
are the ones that don't do as well. It's really weird. There's no predicting it. That's why you just need to shoot for yourself. Just shoot what you see and just shoot at every opportunity like, that you get. Just get out. It doesn't matter if you're shooting on an iPhone or a really basic camera. Just If you're not there, then you're never going to have an image and you're never going to develop. So shoot for yourself and just shoot. Just get out there. You only live once, so you may as well feel like times like this with good memories.